Keep calm. It's your favorite DJ. DJ Ladies and gentlemen, right now, it's the real life with one love talk show. The show that deals with real life and also have fun while we're doing it. Tune in every Wednesday at 5.30, come past 17. And make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for all other things that will be going on with Real Life with One Love. Get ready to enjoy the show and thank you for watching Real Life with One Love. All right, good evening, everyone. This is Real Life with One Love, and we're here right now uh, with this first show going on tonight, and we're so excited to have these individuals, these wonderful women here from the city of Memphis, uh, where they got their start. Well, one of them got their start and, and then came back in and, and did her thing, and we're so proud to have uh, these wonderful young ladies who are doing some crazy, amazing things uh, here in the media world, on radio, on TV, on podcasts, on social media. They're doing some amazing things. Things so I'm so excited to have them on with us this evening uh, for my first show, uh, Real Life of One Love. And so we're going to introduce to you guys. We have Christy Taylor and we have Tina Tilton. Y'all make some noise for Hi. Christy Taylor and Tina Tilton right now. Hey, Hello, ladies. How y'all doing? Tilton hour. Yeah. Yes. I'm Real good. Life. I'm good. I'm good. Thank oh. you for DJ having us, Lavelle. DJ One Love. I'm so DJ excited to have you guys. Uh, so we're going to kind of. Since, since we're branding the Taylor Tilton, uh, we're going to start with Christy and kind of let her give us a backdrop of her uh, tenure in the media world and how she kind of got started in a brief description, if she will. I've had the long story. I love it. <laughs> Uh, what she's been through with college and school. Oh, 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 Christy churches. is a talker. So she, we're going to let you get into it, uh, Christy, and let us know some things, uh, how you got into this media thing and, and what keeps you here. You know, I heard him say brief, so I'm going to do just that and apply. Uh, thank you so much for having me and Tina on the show. Taylor Tilton yes. on Real Life with One Love. One okay, I think I just said it. One okay, well, anyway, uh, <laughs> the answer to the question. <laughs> Can we start over? Can you edit? Just keep going. Don't stop. Oh, keep going. Come on. Can we? Oh, God. Feel it. Don't worry about it. Uh, so the answer to your question, I heard him say brief. Um, I was D.C. born. For many people who don't know, I was born in Washington, D.C. But in the early 70s, mom decided to move her children back south. She was Mississippi born, Tennessee, uh, West Tennessee raised up near Covington. So in the early 70s, my sister, my brother and I, we were moved, you know, back to the south, you know, and Eventually, we moved into the Millington area. My mom had been working on a naval base and, you know, went to Woodstock Elementary, graduated from Millington Central High School, attended Oral Roberts University. And I have to say that when I went to college, Broadway was my ambition. I was a music major. And for those wow. who don't, yeah, something you didn't know about me, Tina. Uh, but <laughs> while I was at Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that's when radio found me. And I always say that radio found me. Um, okay. For one thing, I was a music major, but I was also part of a touring gospel group, Souls of Fire, that was founded by Carlton Pearson and uh, hey, on I the campus Carlton. of university. Carlton's a real yes. Dude. And I believe was that? that must was a heathen then. I don't know. Oh, you is. well, I, I'll bring you up to speed and there's a movie <laughs> oh, okay. on, on Netflix you can watch uh, about his life. <laughs> yeah, I follow, I follow him every night. He goes live just about every night. And he's a family friend, because as a matter of fact, the reason I even went to Oral Roberts University is my sister, was, who was a little older than me, was considering going because we had a lot of cousins out of St. Louis and out of the Maryland area who had attended. And so it was almost like a family thing, because we grew up deep in church, all deep, deep, deep in church right. between Baptist and Church of God in Christ. And so going to a Christian university was kind of just, <laughs> was, you know, was pretty much, you know, the thing to do. But it was in, at Oral Roberts University, while a music major, that I really fell in love while singing in gospel choirs and groups and touring that I didn't necessarily want the road life. I didn't want the life of a musician and a singer, but I still loved music. And I think right. it was God's design that ended up ushering me 
uh, into the shorter version of this into radio. However, I must say I dropped out of school because I was still kicking and hanging with a lot of gospel singers and ended up in Detroit during the time commission was still there. The wine is Margaret Bell was my uh, oh, dear friend because Vanessa Bell Armstrong, I uh, had Margaret had become a TV singer at Oral Roberts University, and that was my entryway into that world and ended up moving up there. But it was also in Detroit while I'm hanging around with musicians and singers. That's really what sealed it for me that, no, I don't want to be a singer because they were in the studio night and day. And I always kept a job, even if it was a piece of a job. Right. Um, I always kept employment. And I started realizing, like, this is not my life. It's my brother's life. I have friends who are deep in it. Um, and it was in Detroit that I ended up finding a job, a part-time job. I mean, really, the short story is that it was like an internship at one of the top radio stations, clipping newspaper clippings for the sales department. And for those who know about sales back in the day, um, they had to go out on sales and they use newspapers and magazines and anything just to track down leads. And I took an internship job clipping newspapers just to be in a radio station. And it was at WJLB FM in Detroit that I really realized this is what I want to do, especially when they started allowing me to voice commercials. And then that led me back to Memphis. And um, for those who don't know, that's where I met my Adrian Davis. We were at K-Faith. WXSS on Central. We talked about that the um, other day. <laughs> yes, you know, and, and 107. And yes, 107 yes, before absolutely. it was hot. We can't come back to that. <laughs> yeah, it, was it was Christian touched. before it was hot. It was Christian before it was hot. Absolutely. And I pretty much was um, on the gospel side, WXSS, and also worked for K-Faith, you know, Touch 107, when they had just brought Tom Joyner, which also becomes right. a full circle because even though there was a couple of years, um, and I'm going to say this very quickly, that... Um, at some point, the station went belly up when the bishop who owned that station, Booth and mm. um, Bishop Bishop Grayson. No, no, not Bishop Grayson. Oh, I can't even think of the bishop's name. Not Bishop Grayson. No, there was another bishop, Bishop Willis. Bishop Willis okay. owned a lot of stations, and the station ended up when he started selling his stations off. So I was out of radio for six long years, me and Michael Davis. And when Michael Davis ended up at 990 The Light, right. and we wow. had reconnected... Wow. <laughs> And we were actually, there, I have to tell you all this, and Michael, there was one time me and Michael were temping, and he was at MCI. Do y'all remember when MCI was over there off of Mill Branch, I think it was? Matt. Like, oh, that was Madison? Okay. The telecom business? Oh, that was AT&T business. Off of hey, Minnesota, Mill Branch I worked area. at MCI for a little while. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> I was at another company in the Willow Business Park. I think it was that one. And yeah. um, and we saw each other, and then he was like, there's this new gospel station. You want to be a part of it? <laughs> And wow. at first I was very, very, you know, as I kept temping, I was like, no, because my checks don't bounce no more. So, but eventually <laughs> Dwayne Benton, the first time when he went to Dwayne, LA, yeah. yeah, that's how I started doing, working on 990 The Light um, because, you know, Dwayne went to, went to LA and nobody wanted to work the weekends. Do you remember Freddie Henderson? Freddie Henderson, he was he was a salesperson, mm -hmm. but he had deep roots in the quartet world. And he had a show on 990 The Light on Saturday mornings. And I was board hopping for him. And I did Sunday morning on 990 The Light. And that was how I got started in 1999, spring of 1999. Because Michael called me and was like, do you want to be on the air this time? We got another position. And that's how I started at Clear Channel and bounced from 990 The Light to V101 to Hallelujah FM. And then... You know, took some time off to go back to school or Roberts University to be exact after I had written a movie and then right. came back and did WJO, I mean, WRBO. Yeah, right. Cumulus Media. And uh, here we are, 2019, segueing into consulting. And now here we are in 2020 during the pandemic. That's when Tina really nudged me because I was like, I don't want to do anything else in media. Right. <laughs> but she was like, you could be on, be on TV, be on TV. And I'm like, I've never had a desire specifically, but right. I have to say this. My mom always said, I see you on TV. Don't you want to be on TV? I'm like, no mom, I'm good with radio. I yeah. liked, I liked being heard and not seen. I liked that part. But Tina was like, no, I mean, not that I don't think I'm cute, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, you better work. <laughs> I just like the fact I like the voice. I've always been in, in love with voice. Right. So, but Tina, Tina pushed me and here I am. And uh, super excited that not only TV, but digital podcasting, all of these great things that are happening now in the 21st century. Uh, so this old uh, radio personality has found new life in these uh, cable and podcast streets. So I'm super excited about it. And I don't know if that was short, but that's my story. And no. I, as they say on Clubhouse, and I surrender the mic. <laughs> 
you need a, you need a whole documentary, man. I mean, like, uh, I love that. I mean, like, when you mentioned uh, Dwayne Benson and you mentioned Michael Agent Davis, and we was having a conversation how uh, me growing up in the quartet world, uh, when yes. they had the K Faith radio station, my my father and I, my uncle, we had a gospel group quartet group called the Vision Gospel Singers, and wow. they used to have a Sunday showcase every Sunday on Get Wheel at the. Uh, I think it's called, it was Wonder Bread Baker Hall or something like that. I can't remember. It's been so long ago. The building is actually still there. And that's where I actually met Michael Adrian Davis. And I would even have to throw Thaddeus Matthews in there because Thaddeus Matthews used to actually MC all of the quartet programs. And then they had a radio station, uh, yeah. 990, I think it was, right there on Lamar. And they used to have us live in the studio, him and Elijah Caldwell. I don't know if you guys remember that name. So I'm just telling you that I've watched radio and TV like all of my life. So to talk to you guys and see where you are and now leading into talking to my friend, Tina Tilton. Well, before you do that, before you go to Stars of Faith, Sunday yes, mornings. Yes, Stars of Faith. Yes. Stars of Faith, Sunday mornings on WXSS. That was my entryway into the quartet. I had never seen live performances in the studio and on Sundays in 1992, mm -hmm. yeah, when I first came home from Detroit, yeah, yeah, we used to be, the, wow. used to be right there in the studio. I used to take a trap set, as they call it. I take a a, a bass drum, a snare, and hi hats, and a crash, and we would play yeah. live in the studio right yeah. there in the radio with Thaddeus Matthews and Elijah Caldwell. Elijah Caldwell has been gone for a good little while, but wow. I've, I've always admired radio and TV, and I knew at some point I would probably be in it. I just didn't know, and so like. To, to, to speed things up and come to our friend Miss Tina Tilton who I've been watching down through the years and saw her, her growth and progress and what she's been doing and starting you know uh, at Hot 107 like who knew that K-Face was going to turn out Hot 107 you know what I mean so <laughs> Tina Tilton I know. want you also to come and give some of your background and, and some of the things that uh, brought you to where you are because you seem like this is really truly your passion because you pulled yes. everybody in into uh, what what you see in them and so uh, yeah. we appreciate you pushing us as we were saying earlier and trying to give us a backdrop of the things that that keep you here and how you got started and all that good thing. Well, I tell you one thing, I I can't say that I feel like a sinner because you two got all the background, all the. Christian background stuff. I'm like, y'all, I don't it know. It wasn't stuff went on me. behind the scenes. It doesn't matter. What you said. <laughs> now, now that part, that part right there. I don't know nothing about y'all. I'm like, I know uh, Def Jam Throwdown under <laughs> Cash Money, man. <laughs> that's what I remember. Hey, I I, but know. you got it. I love the balance. I think Stars a lot of times. That's, that's a whole Gospel other TV Stars. show. That's a whole other <laughs> one. Oh, Lord yeah. have mercy. But, but anyway, again, thank you, DJ One Love, for, for having us here. Uh, long story short, this old South Memphis girl. Um, oldest of, of three kids, okay. mom and dad, you know, we had, a, I was in my traditional mom and dad home. And, um, honestly, I, I'm the first one in my family to, to attend college. So, wow. so that was a, that, that was, uh, um, you know, accomplishment number one, like, wow, mm -hmm. my baby's gone to college. Number two, right. first one to pledge a sorority in college. Uh, right. <laughs> Don't ask what it is. I think uh, this half of the color right here speaks for itself. I see. I see. Go for ahead and get, get that plug. <laughs> okay. And um, wow. And let me tell you this, though. Seriously, while while in college, I honestly went to college because it was down the street. I was trying to leave house, and it was a boy. Let's right. just be real honest about that. Let me, let me get my right. hand in the shot. Let's be real honest about that. But but once I got there, I, I did like the college. I did break up with the boy too, but I did like the college, and and I did not know what I was going to college for. I I had no clue what to study, what to major in, nothing. So the good thing about college is, at least the first two years, you take your electives. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I, I was able to skate by with taking only electives. But mm -hmm. once that junior year came. It was yes. time to make a decision on your life. What are you going to do with yourself? What kind of career are you going to choose? Because at this point is where you're going to have to begin taking classes or courses that mm -hmm. will steer you in that direction. I'm like, gosh, I do not know. So I'm baffled. I'm on the verge of a college breakdown, about to cry. But yet and still, I went into the lobby that one particular night. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Video Soul was on. Donnie Simpson, Sheree wow. Carter. Yeah, yeah, they were on. <laughs> and and 
I, I, I think I called my mom first and was like, mom, you know, what do I do? And she said, well, you know, you've always been in theater. You, you've always loved theater. You, you've always been on the stage. Maybe you should consider uh, majoring in theater. And, and though that sounded cool, it still didn't strike me. I'm like, OK. But when I got in that lobby and saw Video Soul and I saw those two interviewing Snoop Dogg on that camera, I said, wow. mm -hmm, ding dong, that's it, Taylor Tilton. That is what you're going to do when you get out of here. Had no clue of how I was going to go about doing how, you know, I, I even wrote up uh, because, you know, what, what no emails in the 90s, <laughs> not, not 92, 91, 92. There were no emails. Mm -mm, mm -mm, you had to write a letter. Right. So I even I remember even writing a letter to Donnie Sepson saying, I want to do what you do. How do I become one of you? I ain't right. getting no response back, but it's OK. I didn't understand it. I was probably a competitor and <laughs> basically competing for a job. But right. I didn't know. I just wanted to know how did I get to 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 do what he did. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so 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 moving forth, I did graduate college in 94. Told all my friends at that time, even even my friends to this day will say, yeah, Taylor told us that she was going to be on TV and that she was going to be uh, a, a video uh, jock, at the, you know, a VJ, video jock. Right. And I was like, yeah. And, and uh, so 94, graduated college. 95, I got my first job at F100, but I was not on air. OK. Now, let me backtrack a little bit too. keep for me growing up. I never. I really never liked, I'm just going to say those words. I really never liked my voice or my looks. The kids, you, yeah, I know, I know. The kids really? the kids would tease me about my voice and say, oh, your voice is funny. Well, I didn't make it. Oh, you, you got a big nose. Well, I ain't make that either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so so because now and, and you know when you're when you're preteenish and, and a teenager, you mm -hmm. you internalize those those ugliness or those those mm -hmm. ugly things that people say about you, and you and you take them as and you own them basically. Great, yeah. So yes. because of that, I just kind of shut up. I'm like, I'm not going to talk much because if I do, they're going to say something. They're going to, you know, they're going to mock me over my voice. And if I, you know, try to look cute or something like that, then they're going to mock me over anything, uh, my looks or anything, my nose sp specifically. Mm -hmm. And no, my nose don't smell too good, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Kristen, now you have to listen to the podcast, people. Y'all right. have to listen to one of those Table Tilton Hour, I mean, show podcasts. I, it works sometimes, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but it's mine. And God gave it to me. That God, I'll keep it. I ain't changing. But anyway, um, so 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 I did internalize those things. So when I when I got out of school, uh, F one hundred was my first job. But I remember having a conversation with Ron Olson at F one hundred. He was the uh, morning show personality at F one hundred. Him and Steve Conley at right. the time and Karen Parent. And he asked me. He sat down. He said, "You didn't get a college degree just to file papers because that's what I was doing. I was a I was a, an assistant assistant. <laughs> so I was like for real at the bottom, but had a college degree." He said, "What right. do you want to do?" So I really want to do television. He said, you should consider contacting the cable company and getting your own TV show. I said, how do I do that? He said, I don't know. You got to contact them. I said, I can't do that. He said, why can't you? I don't know. I had no answer as to why I couldn't do it. But he said, I want you to try. And I walked out of there and I tried. And um, wow, let's see. I did not. I, I was not immediately on air. I actually just went in as an intern and I saw there was one one little television show that was out for us. And CJ, CJ Johnson, Cornelius uh, Johnson had the show on. You you remember CJ? Uh, I forget the name of his show. Oh, gosh. I remember him interviewing um, uh, Kid and Play. That's, that's, that's about all I remember. But but for two years, I tried to get my own television show and it was not working because they already had one, which was right. CJ. But CJ got married and CJ contacted me and said, hey, do you want my time slot? Because I'm about to pull my show. And I said, sure. But but after two years of waiting, I was not really prepared because I really uh, uh, one love and Chris Taylor. I really wanted a dance show. I love me some Soul Train. I can't <laughs> dance, but I love to have always loved Soul Train. You don't have to talk so about Don Cornelius. Yeah, you want to be like a yeah. Don Cornelius. I wanted yeah. to be a female. Daughter. Matter of fact, I tried to get hired at Soul Train, but Shamar Moore took my job. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm like, I'm going to Soul Train. 
<laughs> but but since I couldn't do soul part train, two of this show, my own soul train. And you know, Stan Bell had his dance time show here in yep. Memphis too. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Did you know that, Percy? You didn't know? No. Yeah, yeah he had that. a show called Dance Time where college students were dancing. I don't know where they, you know, produced it. But nonetheless, I'm like, if Don Cornelius could do it, Stan Bell locally could do it. I know I right. could pull me off one. But uh, when when CJ pulled his show, it was too it was too fast of a turnaround for me to do. So I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I tell you what, I'm going to just make a video show. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to record some videos <laughs> off of BET, hit record, right. and <laughs> and I'm going to make myself a video show. So I sat in front of the camera and, hey, you're watching Tim Tilton and you're welcome to Video Waves. So, so far, I came up with a name, yada, yada, real quick. Lo and behold, BET got hold that I was airing their videos because their logo was at the bottom of the screen because I didn't have any videos. And I had to have a show oh, on wow. immediately or they were going to take me off. So at that <laughs> point, they started sending me to record labels and <laughs> telling record labels about this show that was down south that existed. And, 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 that, and I started receiving music videos from the various record labels to air their air, air their. So audience. you were the first female VJ in Memphis? Yeah. Oh wow! This is yeah. phenomenal. This I, is I was th actually one of uh, one of the only in the in the country. There were eleven of us at the time. If, if mm -hmm. eleven or fifteen, it was some odd number. Certainly wasn't twenty. And and so record labels were amazed that someone was actually airing their artists' music videos. So almost every tour, every promotional, whatever. I mean, I was flying in and out of the city every weekend, y'all. I was so tired. This was my early 20s. I was so tired. And uh, oh, oh yeah, now it's way cuter. Uh, but Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was cute. I'm still cute. I was smaller. Let's put it that way. I was way smaller. So, <laughs> but uh, but but it, and, and it just but but the whole video thing, it, it started to catch. And a lot of people, it just grew, grew, grew and grew. And a lot of people began uh, jumping on the video show bandwagon. And, um, and and obviously, I never stopped receiving videos. They they know me as the video job, but 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 that's definitely one of those top fifteen pioneers in the country to to air music videos. Wow, man! This this yeah. time this time is going too fast. I can, it's, uh -oh. it's like we got to do a part two. It's like oh my god, this is so much information. It's, that's why I wanted to to interview you all because I I know I've watched you all. I've saw. Uh, you know your 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 beginnings, and not all your beginnings, but like you know what you guys have become. And now that you guys have merged and made this brand Taylor Tilton, I mean it has the ultimate ring to it. I mean like, hey, that's gonna be a big thing. And so you guys are now doing your own podcast together. And I've been on there. You guys got some great energy, and I think this here is gonna be the start of something great uh, because a lot of time with women. Uh, yeah, they don't always work together good. And it's amazing how you guys got similar backgrounds. Uh, I didn't know both of y'all wanted to be an opera. Oh, my God. You know, hey, who knows where the Lord will bring you. <laughs> so uh, I'm so excited for what you guys are doing. Uh, tell us a little bit more uh, how that's happening and where we can find you. And uh, when would they be airing and all that good stuff, the Taylor Tilting Show? Because we're almost out of time. I, I'm about to cry. Like, can <laughs> that's we do okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Christy Taylor. You got it. Uh oh, wrong way. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the Taylor Tilton show, which was a brainchild of Tina Tilton, because we had already created the Taylor Tilton Hour. Uh, right. We both have which is television, show, which is television. So I had yeah, the Taylor Tilton Hour is our block of time on on Comcast with the goal okay. of going into different Comcast markets. I have the Christy Taylor show. She had Tina Tilton's The Blend. The blend. We put the, the we blend. put them back to back and that became the Taylor Tilton hour. But Tina was wow. like as we launched in November, let's do an audio podcast to let people know every Tuesday that mm -hmm. we have the Taylor Tilton hour at 10 on Tuesday. So when that jumped off, little did we know that our very Lighthearted conversations at 9 a.m. in the morning on Tuesdays would blow up. Of course, we've had um, other media friends who've contacted us, yourself included, who have been quite amazed at us and our mix together. Because, of course, we're back to back with our TV shows. But right. to actually hear us banter every Tuesday morning and we're talking about anything, anything, anything. And, yes, really? you know, we love the fact that 
that we are able to, and Tina really sold me on it when she said, you know, would you be interested in doing that? I'm like, first of all, waking up extra early because typically my alarm doesn't go off to 930 and to be on at nine o'clock, she said, but it will show people parts of us that oftentimes they don't know beyond our media personas. And that's really something that I've been wanting to do because for most people I've been known for gospel or right. inspiration. And, yeah. you know, of course, I did two years with um, WRBO doing love songs in the midday between Steve Harvey and D.L. Hughley. But a lot of who I am, that zany, zesty, adventurous person, I think that I wanted to start being able to show more. And even my TV show doesn't give me that because I'm interviewing people. But to just right. have banter and to laugh and to just be who we are was it was something I was looking forward to. And you can check it out to the fact. The Taylor Chilton Show, which is our audio podcast, okay. you can check it out on our YouTube channels as well as on Spotify and Anchor. And it airs every Tuesday, streaming live on multiple platforms, including Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and the replays are on YouTube and Spotify and Anchor. And of okay. course, you can check out our TV shows, The Taylor Chilton Hour, in multiple markets at 10 a.m. Memphis chattanooga rome georgia florence alabama and we're going we're going to take over the world yeah we, we have a new market that we're announcing uh this week so we'll let okay. you know so you definitely wow. want to tune in every tuesday at 9 a.m for the taylor tilton show on facebook youtube also streaming on twitter and also you can catch the replays on spotify anchor and youtube and yep. uh, I just I'm excited about it and just to be able to have this conversation and I'm looking forward to the part two because there are so many it, things it that part two. <laughs> yeah no. there's so many things oh, that we no. haven't had a chance to share but Lavelle I want to say thank you for giving us an opportunity to Me be too. your first guest right Me too. your thank first you. guest yeah. <laughs> thank you I mean, and this I'm is real so proud life. of both of you all I'm so right. proud well, so I, thank you when I was thinking about it I was like what do I have first and so uh the fact that when me and Tina connected, it was so spontaneous and so like she just called me out of the blue. I don't even remember how it happened. She said, can you can I interview you today? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, sure. So I already had my stuff set up, ready to go. And it's, right. it just started from there, which we already had knew each other down through the years yes, and we see each other yes. in different shows and you know, over at Pastor Floyd Church at a suit of God and all that good thing. And then all of it just came full circle. So I'm so thankful for what uh, is going to happen with this. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to go do some live remotes together and yes, all that type yes. of things. So I'm, so, I'm totally excited. I hate that this time is coming to an end. We got like a minute and 20 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys, thank you. And uh, we got to do part two. I I guess, hey, we're just going to let this be the whole first month of the show. Just to Taylor and Tilton. I, I think that's good. It's going to have to do that because you guys have so much history. I never knew all this stuff went on with Tina. I had talked to uh, to Christy before uh, because we, we uh, work with some people that we know together. But Tina, my God, I didn't know all that information with the uh, first video person and all that. That's major because yeah. yes. that's why you got to that's why you got to communicate. And we're in communication. Yeah. So, again, thank you, guys. I can't wait to. You're welcome. Hours. And part You're welcome. two is going to happen. Like y'all got to tell me we can come back on. So thank you for guys for watching the real life of one love show. And we are going to do the part two of the Taylor Tilton show right here with real life with one love. Thank you, guys. And thank you for watching Real Life with One Love.